Welcome students. My name is Boniface Mduguru, a biology teacher. I'm here to present to you very interesting concepts in human reproduction. Therefore, the topic I'm going to present to you is reproduction and the subtopic is reproduction in human being and the area I'm going to focus more is reproductive system in male and female. My dear students, the main concept I'm going to present to you is reproductive system in a human being. In a human being, there are male reproductive system and a female reproductive system. These systems perform general functions such as also they perform production of hormones and also in a female body they are site for fertilization and These are general functions which the reproductive systems performs. To start with, let us see the structure of the female reproductive system. The female productive system consists of ovary, this is the center where gametogenesis takes place and hormone production takes place. Another structure that makes female productive system is the fallopian tube or the oviduct. The oviduct transports the oocytes to uterus.
but also form the center where fertilization takes place. But also, there are the uterus. The uterus is the site where the fetus develops. Another structure is the cervix. The cervix allow the flow of the menstrual fluid. Next structure is the vagina. This is also known as base canal. It is the canal that allows the baby to be delivered out. These are major female reproductive parts and these are the functions of each part. Let us see the male reproductive system, particularly the inner parts. The inner part of the male productive system consists of testes, like in female, this forms the site for sperm production. But also production and the secretion of sexy hormone. Also, the male reproductive system also consists of the epididymis. Epididymis, these are coiled ducts where the sperms are temporarily stored for maturation. Not only that, the male reproductive system also consists of the sperm ducts. The sperm ducts transport the spermatozoa from the epididymis to urethra. Urethra transports spermatozoa from the inner part of the male productive system to the female reproductive tracts. But also within the male productive system, there are accessory glands. This includes prostate gland,
the prostate glands, these produce the fluid that contain phospholipid and fatty acids. This they nourish the spermatozoa during their transports to female productive tracts. But also another accessory gland is the corpus gland. The corpus gland produces fluid containing alkaline solution. This neutralizes the acidity that might be present in the vaginal tract and the urethra. And the last accessory gland is semino vesco. Like other accessory gland, the semino vesco uh, produce the fluid containing fructose and vitamin C. This is there for nourishment to the spermatozoa, particularly the fructose are used for energy production. That will enable the spermatozoa to swim into the female productive tract in search of female uh, reproductive cells. Therefore, Dear students, these are the functions of the accessory glands that are in the male productive system and therefore let us see the general function. Of those accessory glands, there are three. One is the protection. The protection here they protect against the acid. That is why some of the fluid contain the alkaline solution for neutralization of the acid that may be present in the vaginal tract or the urethra. But also, another function of the fluid secreted by these accessory gland is nourishment. Of the spermatozoa, that's why you have seen that they are fructose, they are vitamin C, they are phospholipid and the fat acids. These are there to nourish the spermatozoa. And finally, is that the fluid produced by these accessory glands allow swift movement of the sperms.
swift movement of sperm. It means they allow motility of the sperm to take place so easily within the female productive tracts. Let us see some guiding questions that can arise from this concept. But you must know that these questions can be asked in different ways. But the question I'm going to show here is just few questions and how you can answer them. The first question, as we can see here, reads, male reproductive system consists of inner parts and the outer parts. Describe the function of the inner parts of the male reproductive system. I repeat, the male reproductive system consists of inner parts and the outer parts. Describe the function of the inner part of the male reproductive system. My dear students, if you see that question is asking you to describe the function of the inner part of the male reproductive system, what you, want, you, you are supposed to do here is to identify the inner part of the male reproductive system and explain the function of each part. For instance, you, there is testes. This is the inner part. Therefore, to answer this question, you have to explain the function of the testes. That is the site of gamete production. But also, it is the site where sexy hormones are produced. Another inner part of the male productive system is the epididymis. The epididymis stores sperm temporarily Another inner part of the male reproductive system is the sperm duct. Which its function is transportation of the male gametes. Another inner part is the urethra. The urethra transports male gamete to female reproductive tracts. But also there is accessory glands. Accessory glands are three. There is prostate gland. Copa's gland. And the semino vesco. By having explained each part of this that constitute the reproductive system, you will have answered this question. Therefore, students, let I take you to the next question. Here, students, we have done the first question, and I have shown you how you could answer this question. Now, this is the second question. We are going also to see how to answer this question. 
The question number two reads, the testes are the organs of male gametes formation. Explain how the testes adapted for the process of gametogenesis. Good. If you see this question, wants you to explain how the testes is adapted for the gametogenesis. And therefore, what you are supposed to do here is to examine the inner parts of the testes itself. So that you can answer this question correctly. Testes. The testes consists of the seminiferous tubuli. These seminiferous tubuli are lined with large number of primordial germ cells that give rise to spermatozoa. The inner part of the testis consists of the following structures. There is seminiferous tubuli. The seminiferous tubuli consists of large number of primordial germ cells that give rise to sperms. But also, inside the testes, there are settling cells. Settling cells. The function of settling cells is to nourish the spermatozoa. There are lady cells inside the testes, just around the seminiferous tubuli. These produce and secrete testosterone. But also, inside the testes, there are blood vessels. These transports oxygen and nutrients. Oxygen and the nutrients necessary for development of spermatozoa. Dear students, for that case, if you want to answer this question correctly, you will have to go to the structures that constitute the inner part of the testes and explain the function of each part. My dear students, I'm sure you have seen how we can answer this question. Let I take you to the third question and see how we can answer it. Dear students, we have done question number two. Let us see the question number three and explain how to answer this question. The question number three reads, explain the endocrine functions of the male reproductive system. Explain the endocrine functions of the male reproductive system. The male reproductive system, as we said, consists of the testes. It must be known that the testis is where the sexy hormones is produced. And the hormone produced by the testis is the testosterone.
The first function is the testosterone stimulates secondary sex development. As we all know, development of the beards, development of the hair at the armpits, the hair around the genital, and the other sex secondary features. But the second function is that it stimulates spermatogenesis. These are functions performed by testosterone in the male reproductive system as this hormone is produced within the testis. My dear students, let us now see the next question. And the next question is question number four, which reads as follow. Why is it necessary for the male reproductive system to have each of the following structures a blood vessels b endocrine glands dear students this question also wants you to explain the role of the blood vessels role The blood vessels present in the testes uh, have three main functions. One is to supply blood rich in oxygen. Supply blood rich in oxygen. But second, supply Blood contain testosterone. And finally, supply blood rich in nutrients. For that case, the blood vessels present in the testicles has this important function to perform that they enable these uh, necessary substances to enter into the testicles for proper development of the spermatozoa. The testis is an endocrine gland producing an endocrine hormone known as testosterone. But this question asks you to explain why it is necessary for the male reproductive system to have the endocrine gland. As we all know, the testes produce testosterone. Therefore, to answer this question, you will have to explain the role of testosterone in male reproductive system. But we all know that testosterone is a hormone that stimulates development of secondary sex characteristics in males. But also, testosterone stimulates spermatogenesis. Therefore, to answer this question, particularly part B, 
you will have to identify or to mention the hormone produced by the testis and its function. By so doing, you will have answered this question correctly. Dear students, from the beginning, I told you that this concept can produce several different Dear students, from the beginning I told you that this concept, from this concept, there are many questions that can arise. But what you need to understand is the knowledge that can enable you to answer these questions. But the concept is male reproductive system. But within a male reproductive system, we can produce large number of questions asked in different ways after having done question number one question number two question number three question number four let us see question number five the question number five reads as follow explain the functions of each of the following in the male reproductive system Explain the functions of each of the following in the male reproductive system. A. Prostate glands. B. Seminovesco. C. Corpus glands. As I've said before, these are male reproductive system accessory glands. And they have their contribution in the functioning of the male reproductive system. What you need to understand here. The question wants you to explain the role of the prostate gland. Role of prostate gland. Also, the role of seminovesco. Also, the role of the corpus gland. By answering that, you will have answered this question correctly. Let me highlight some of the important things that are done by these uh, accessory glands. We said prostate gland produce fluid that contain phospholipid and fatty acid. Seminovesco produce the fluid that contain fructose and vitamin C. While the corpus gland produce the fluid contain alkaline solution. Therefore, these are the composition of the fluid produced by these glands in the male reproductive system. Therefore, what you need to know to do is that you'll have to explain the role of these uh, substances, the role of these substances, and the role of this alkaline solution. By so doing, you will have answered this question correctly. The following question is one of the guiding questions that can come from the female reproductive system. The question reads, describe the function of the inner parts of the female reproductive parts. Now, here you have to identify the inner part of the female productive system. You have the ovary. The ovary, as I said before, produce hormones. That is progesterone. And Australian. 
These are two hormones produced by the ovary, but also another function is production of female garment. But another inner part of the female reproductive system, you have the oviduct. The oviduct is a duct that it transports female garment to uterus. Another function of the oviduct, it forms the site where fertilization takes place. This is the function of the oviduct, but the inner part also consists of the uterus. The uterus form the site for fetal development. Another inner part consists of the cervix. As I said before, control the flow of the menstrual fluid. The last is the vagina. This is the base canal which allow the passage of the fetus during delivery. These are the functions of the inner part of the female productive system. Let us see the second question and how we can answer it. Let us see the second question that can arise from the female productive system and how this question can be answered. This question reads as follows. The main function of ovary is eugenesis. How the ovary adapted for the process of eugenesis? The main function of ovary is eugenesis and how the ovary is adapted for the process of eugenesis. It means the ovary is adapted for eugenesis by having some important features. Ovary. The ovary, as I said before, has the blood vessels this blood vessels serves two functions transport foods food nutrients and oxygen but also the blood vessels transports sexy hormones to the site of female gamete cell production. Also, the inner part of the ovary has uh, glands, has cells modified for secretion of sexy hormones, such as oestrogen, which stimulate uh, female productive cell production, but also you have progesterone. This hormone is produced during menstruation cycle 
just after ovulation to prepare the endometrium ready for implantation. Mm. Also, the inner part of the ovary consists of cells that give rise to female reproductive cells. These are primordial germ cell. These cells are present in the graphian follicle. Therefore, they undergo mitotic division and meiotic division to give rise to female sex cells. Therefore, to answer this question, you will have to explain the role of this gland, the role of the blood vessels, and the role of the graphian follicle that consists or that contain the primordial germ cells. By so doing, you will have answered this question that asks you to explain how the ovary is adapted for the process of O genesis. Now, let us see the next question that can arise from this area. And this will be question number three, which reads as follow. Why is it necessary for the female reproductive system to have each of the following structures? A. Blood vessels. B. Endocrine glands. This is not the new concept. Since I started presenting these concepts, this can be answered with the reference to what I answered the question that arise in the male reproductive system. I said the blood vessels transport oxygen. Transport oxygen. Also transports food, nutrients, but also transports hormones. And I said the female production system produces two hormones, the oestrogen and the progesterone. But also I said oxygen is used for energy production. Whereas nutrients are necessary for development of the female reproductive cells. But also the question wants you to explain the function of the endocrine glands. That the female productive system is also an endocrine gland. Here, as we said, the ovary has cells that produce two hormones, oestrogen and the progesterone. These two hormones have special function in the female productive system as these stimulate eugenesis. And this stimulates development of endometrium for implantation. If in a case fertilization was successfully taken in place. Dear students, by having explained the role of the glands, the role of the blood vessels, you will have answered this question very Correctly. Dear students, I'm happy that you have done with question number one, question number two, and the question number three, all of them coming from female reproductive system. But I've said before that 
this area can produce large number of questions asked in different ways. Therefore, let, I, let me take you to question number four so that we can see how this question can be answered. This question asks as follow, the fallopian tube is the site for fertilization. Explain how the fallopian tube adapted for fertilization. As we all know that fertilization only occur in the fallopian tube. However, some people misconcept by saying that fertilization occur in the uterus. That is not the case. Within the fallopian tube is where fertilization takes place during its journey from the ovary to uterus. Therefore, what are the things you have to consider when you want to answer this question? First of all, the fallopian tube is a tube like it means it has space in between you will have to explain what is the essence of having a space in between from the ovary to the uterus but also the inner part of the fallopian tube has cilia body these are hair like structures that line the inner part of the fallopian tube third the fallopian tube also has mucosa cells that secrete mucus. This mucus allows swift movement of the oocyte. Coming to cilia bodies. The cilia bodies, their beating action allow the oocyte to be pushed forward in the course of its journey from the ovary to uterus. Therefore, what you need to know here, my students, is that there are different questions that can arise from this area. But these are just a few to show you how you can answer and how you can get marks. My dear students, before I wind this presentation, I would like to extend my sincere thanks for taking your time and watching, listening to this presentation. I'm sure you have got something that can enable you to answer questions and uh, many other problems that can arise from this area. I'm sure you will still join me the next presentation when I will be presenting to you the gametogenesis in a female and a male reproductive system. Till next day, see you.